We're about to discuss another, what I think is probably a much better and certainly more communal way of watching movies. So you should probably introduce our guest. Yeah, exactly. It is. I mean, it is with that in mind. We, we are often on the show have said, well, where is London cinema in particular going? We often hark back to the days where you could go to, to f- seedy venues like the Scala oh, and watch Scala one of all, all night. night and all night, or even the, ele- the old electric in Portobello. Uh, but we've talked about the phenomenon of the boutique cinema, which yep. the new electric has done and the everyman's doing, uh, and how to kind of you know get away from the kind of already uh, the, the, the prescribed the set menu that the, the multiplexes are giving us. And how do we go? Oh, I mean, it's a very very cuisine kind of influence <laughs> metaphors today here on the show, uh, and what Londoners can do um, to to kind of break out from that. And over the last few years, there's definitely been a movement to seek out something new, seek out something secret. And the people behind uh, the movement called Secret Cinema uh, are about to hold their biggest ever event this weekend in London. So I thought it was a perfect time to reveal the man behind Secret the Cinema. Secret. Yeah, I feel like Toto in The Wizard of Oz here, <laughs> bringing back The Wizard. He is uh, Fabian Riggle, who uh, is the founder of Secret Cinema, and he joins us here on BBC London this afternoon. Welcome, Fabian. Thank you. Uh, well, I mean, uh, Robert and I write, was there a, a sort of need to invent Secret Cinema? Because if it hadn't been invented, it was going to happen anyway. Yeah, I think it, it's, you know, we, we started doing events with Future Shorts, where we do events that combine a short film festival, but also with um, live music. And so it's like combining the idea of a, a live gig, but turning it into a film event. And I think that there's just a shift. You're talking about community. I think generally people are wanting to go back to those sort of gigs like the Scala in places like that, where there's, you know, the experience of a live gig is much more of a social event. And I think people want to socially react and, and, and talk and discuss films like, like you guys do here. And I think people want something more, something more engaging than, you know, the escalator that goes up into a multiplex or, you know, perhaps, you know, the overpriced um, nuts that you get in other cinemas. Um, I think it's just about, you know, people wanting something else else now secret cinema explain to people who haven't gone on because it started i think in 2007 i think we even mentioned it on the show the first ever secret cinema which was under the arches wasn't it in was it Vauxhall? yeah Yeah. uh, in london bridge london bridge yeah Yeah. under the arches and it was suitably underground kind of film so you no one knew but no one knew what the film was going to be so they just turned up in in hope and trusting secret cinema to deliver the goods yeah and that's still the model you're using show it and they will come (laughs) yeah i think it's uh, well that's what it was i guess a bit of a risk that we didn't tell them what they were seeing or exactly where they were going to see it and so we had to eventually obviously tell them where they're going to see it otherwise they'd have no idea where the <laughs> hell to go um, but um but they came and we we sold out the first event and we did paranoid park which is obviously gus van sant's film very dreamy sort of moody film and we but w- what we didn't want to do was just do f- every film like that so the idea is that each time the film would really change and be a very different kind of film. Um, and yeah, so that's where it started, 400 people. And then the last event that we did was Blade Runner, where over 7,000 people 7, came. 7,000? 7,000 people came to wow. it, which was, which was pretty amazing. Where did you show that? Hong Kong? In Canary Wharf. Right, OK. Well, that's uh, as close as we get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, it's sort of modelled on it, probably. Um, but um, yeah, so I think for me, it's a sort of, thank God the audience, um, the audience trusts us to such a degree that they would do this but for me what they're saying is that they want to they want to be involved and immersed into a film it's more powerful for them than purely something you know which you can watch in, in a traditional way because it's not but just turn up and watch the film what's what, what what sort of experience then do you put on it because you must think well you know if i'm doing paranoid park well obviously you had a little sort of skate park going on yeah uh when you did uh a night at the opera for example you did at the hackney empire didn't you yes. and there was a sort of opera thing kind of you know marx brothersy thing going we had a on mini opera a beginning. mini opera yeah. so do you, you think something to go with the film every time yeah so it's kind of like what we want to do is take the location and the location really is a character in the film if you look at Blade Runner essentially the location is even more important than the characters in the film and we want to make that the really uh, you know the, uh, you know, part of the experience is, is, is discovering this location and then what we do is we create we have a theatre company where we have around 150 actors who work in theatre and film and TV and, and they basically like this idea of site specific so we create the world of it so when the audience arrive they are in that world World. So um, what comes first for you? Is it the venue first and then you match the film to it? Or is that the way around you do it? Yeah, that's the, that's the best way around. Um, but, as, you know, it's, it's essentially sometimes it's about trying to find the venue for the perfect film, um, yeah. which is sometimes really difficult. It's a mixture of the two. It's just, for me, it's about sort of just hoping that they're you know, going to have no idea what they're going to see. And uh, what have you done? Bugsy Malone? So we started with Paranoid Park, then we did Funny Face, then we did Lindsay Anderson's If at Dulwich College, then we did Night of the Opera at the Hackney Empire, then we did Ghostbusters um, in, the, um, in a massive building in Westminster. It was a library, wasn't it? It's, name. it's not a library, it's this huge 
building that I forget the name somewhere where they do a lot of car shows. It's huge, gigantic places. Uh, it's Bugsy Malone, where was that? Bugsy Your Malone goal. was at the Troxy. Have you heard uh, if you've been to the Troxy in no. East London? It used to be a cinema and it right. then became, I think, a church and then it became a gig again. Nick Cave played there and stuff. Um, and then we we did after that, we did Wings of Desire at the Pavilion in Shepherd's Bush. We turned, turned that into Potsdam and Platts and then we did Blade Runner at... Um, have you done the Warriors as well? Oh, I forgot. We did the Warriors, in, the Warriors in London Fields, which was quite interesting because we had two and a half thousand people dress up in gangs and then we had a hundred actors playing the gangs. And, and then, then we did had, the real gangs turn up? And the real gangs turned up. <laughs> not, so, in, not in their sort of denim cut-offs. So it's like um, the camp sadly, tough gangs. the real gangs didn't take the dress code seriously. <laughs> and they basically just like circled on bicycles around the perimeter. But what was nice is that we showed this video by Roman Gavras um, called Stress, which is this really hardcore gang uh, film. And so you had all the real gangs watching this film um, of these gangs in the 70s that were all a bit, little bit camp in the Warriors. <laughs> they are, aren't they? Slightly, yeah, it's like the odd. Chains and bikers and leather. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line. Um, but we wouldn't want to tell that to, them, to their face. Now, I presume that the event taking place over the next couple of days... Um, you won't be able to tell us what it is or where. No, I can just tell you. I mean, obviously, you can probably tell from my tribal gear that I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah, but they um, can't. This is radio. <laughs> no, but, but, <laughs> but that's when we describe it or however you do in radio. But um, but no, um, all I can say is that we have um, it's uh, four different tribes from the north, south, east and west that are coming over from all over, um, all over the land. Um, and it's a very tribal um, affair. And it's in, um, we can tell you that the meeting point, well, the, the place is somewhere in North London where there is a great palace. Okay. Um, um, that's the biggest so, clue I think I've ever given. That is quite a clue. Um, that is quite a clue. Um, where do people find out more information? There must be a website. Uh, yeah, so to get onto, and if they can't come this weekend, they can go onto secretcinema.org. Um, they can join up and become a member and part of Secret Cinema, and then they get sent an email to say where we've sold out on the sun Saturday night, um, but there are there is still room for you know um, tribal uh, people to join so, us. And, and then Friday if you did sign up, if you didn't make it this weekend, and yeah. this is your biggest event, doing it three nights in a 15, row. 15,000 people. Wow. Wow. It's a big palace. Um, you, will you be in the future? Did get, I say it was a palace? You did. You mentioned it was you a did, palace. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was lying. <laughs> You're backtracking now. Now, if so if I don't make it this weekend, do I, will I get emails in the future sort of in advance sort of say, well, we've got another event coming yeah, up? Yeah, so this you, can join, you can just join and you get sent an email that basically tells you when the next event's going right. to be. Um, and you can also go and um, log on to Facebook and Twitter and we have updates all the time that's the other thing about facebook and twitter is kind of interesting is we're using it as a campaign that's the only way that we really talk to the audience and the audience have become a character which is tribes and we've become another character and that's also how you find out we send like music that's related to the film and clues and mm. sound I mean, it does surprise me how still many, how many times a year sorry would you yeah. say that you put on an event how many times have I ever put on a year? No, how often do these events take place? Oh, there's we've done so, so last year I think we did eight, but this year they're every two months. Okay, but we started doing so them, about half a dozen a year. Yeah, yeah, about half a dozen a year, and they they run for between three and seven nights. Um, wow! But what we're hoping to do is do kind of like a whole month of something like I don't know um, Tron or something. You know, the, it, to to be able to do these epic events, so you can see it in IMAX and you can see it um, in cinema, and you but you can also see it in this sort of immersive world. It's not surprising that people do want to get, kind of get dressed up. When you first Why? moved to this idea, I thought, well, that, you know, a certain number of people will do it. But now it's grown. That's well, they all dress up. Con- I think if you don't dress doing. up, there's more people that, that dress up that don't dress up. And I think that people, gen- I think people just want to get out of their sort of thing for like a night and do something a bit insane. And it is, you know, it's a bit odd, but it's fun. Mm, absolutely, no, but, yeah, and a very fun atmosphere at these events, I must say. I'm sure it is, and I, uh, and it sounds fantastic. I mean, that thing of kind of dressing up, I immediately have all these horror th- things mm. of, of, I don't know, what was that that rather camp play where people dressed up all the time to go and see mm. it and, and put on suspense? And then Rocky Horror yeah, Picture Show. See, now I ate all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of, but this isn't quite like that. Well, we're n- we, we haven't done Rocky Horror, and I, I don't think we're going to do Rocky Horror. Don't purely, Rocky it's just Horror. so no, over, overdone. But what's interesting is we, we did Alien, and really Scott actually did a little video introduction. We oh, really? pretended he was on part of the spaceship, but he wasn't actually there. And um, in order to be able to get that kind of feeling of spaceship, we put everyone in white overalls <laughs> and then gave them um, code names. And then we put them and checked them into uh, kind of isolation units. Um, but it was kind of interesting because it was Halloween. And uh, on Halloween, everyone dresses up, but we just basically dressed everyone in white. So there were a thousand people wandering around this venue in white. It was quite odd. It reminds me slightly of a kind of mutoid waist uh, <laughs> dudes that used to be in the 1980s in huge kind of places in King's Cross. And they would often use cinema as part of a, a kind of a, a, a bigger event because I presume it's it's a, it's a party as well as an as, yeah. as well as a movie. Well, I know? think that's really where I mean I think I really got 
the idea was was sort of wandering about uh, Glastonbury Festival and all the stuff that's sort of related to music, but it's sort of in the peripherals that you just discover, like a little gypsy band playing in a field here. And that sort of idea that music, well, it wasn't all about the music, even though it was inspired by music. And I just kind of think that film doesn't have that. Film was sort of, wasn't, you know, like, it just needs to get out of itself, as it were. So it's a bit like, again, I guess uh, the old days of, of going to big parties where you used to meet on the... Um, you know, on the motorway, and then you get to a forest and you dance. Yeah, happenings, rave culture, it's all plugging into that. But with a bit of new old media film and, and new media as well, with the Facebook and the Twitter thing, it's a kind of interesting marriage. It's probably where cinema is at right now in London. And it's www.secretcinema.org. Um, Fabian, thank you very, very much. Thank you.